In this vlog, we are officially entering revision hell. I'm gonna be kickstarting draft two of my new adult fantasy novel titled Unraveling. It's a new adult fantasy with enemies to lovers romance and dystopian vibes. If you're new here, hi, my name is Rael. <laughs> I'm a 25 year old writer in Los Angeles working on what is hopefully going to be my self-publishing debut novel and entering into draft two. This is my first time ever revising a full length manuscript. So it's going to be quite a new experience for me. If you hear how congested I am, because I feel like it's very obvious in my voice, I am sick or on the tail end of being sick, I hope, but still sick. Fun fact about me is my body is very sensitive to lack of sleep. I have never been one who who does well with getting less than eight hours a night. And I recently just took a trip to the East Coast. I went to New Jersey to visit my family and then I went to Florida to visit my virtual bestie, Amina. It was our first time meeting, it was very exciting. But I got on an East Coast schedule and then I did a very bad job when I came back to the West Coast of making sure that I was like getting enough sleep and adhering to the East Coast hours a little bit. And so I got sick. So this is very normal, unfortunately for me to get sick if that happens. So it's like fine. I pretty much hibernated yesterday and now I'm feeling good enough to try and actually do some productive stuff. Today, it's currently Saturday. So I still have my entire weekend ahead of me. I took a sick day yesterday off of work. Anyway, with all that context in mind, like I said, we're entering into draft two in this video. So while I was in Florida, actually, me and Amina went to a coffee shop and between that coffee shop session and being on the planes, I was actually able to finish up all of the pre-revision prep. So I was ready to hit the ground running as soon as I got back to Los Angeles, which was great. I made some great progress. I'll pop some of the things that I made up on the screen, but I made a map of my capital city. I made little mood boards for a few of the locations. So I'm feeling really good. And so since I've gotten back, I have attempted to revise chapter one between two different writing sessions. Last night I joined a writing live stream with Mick Wrights and Cody the writer. I think I underestimated the difficulty of the revision process. It's not that I thought it was going to be easy, but I am really struggling to get into the flow with it. And I think it's because in part it feels like I'm trying to use the drafting part of my brain because I'm coming up with new sentences, new chunks in the chapters, obviously. But then at the same time, I'm trying to think more analytically and be more of a perfectionist. I feel like my best writing during drafting happened when when I was able to actually like kind of turn my brain off and get into flow. And I'm struggling to figure out how to get into flow with revising because it's a much more analytical part of the process, it feels like, where I have to be more strategic and I can't just like let it all flow out and see what happens. So I'm struggling with that a little bit. It feels like an odd combination of trying to be creative, but also trying to keep in mind all the things that need to be changed from like a logic of the world perspective, as well as just like cleaning up sentences and trying to have like good craft on like a line level. So it's been difficult. I've, I think I've mentioned that draft two obviously is predominantly supposed to be a developmental edit, fixing up things that don't make sense in the plot in the world and all of that. But I did also make a lot of line level comments on the draft when I did my annotating process. So I am trying to address at least some of those things and make draft two at least slightly better in terms of line level craft. So <laughs> Here's what I think is happening. I think I'm being a bit of a perfectionist about it because I obviously want draft two to be as good as draft two can be. But I think I'm trying to make draft two as good as the book is gonna get, if that makes sense. I'm acting as if draft two is gonna be the final form of the novel is what it really is. And so I'm being such a perfectionist when I think there will have to be times in draft two where I leave something to be cleaned up later. Like, yes, I'm gonna make big strides and big changes, but that doesn't mean that every sentence, every paragraph has to be in its final form. In fact, that's definitely not going to be the case anyway, because I still have further edits to make. So I think it's just a matter of finding the right balance between being as productive as I can with draft two in the sense of getting it as good as I can for this draft, but also knowing when it's time to let go and be like, okay, that's good enough for now. Like that's, that's how it's going to be in draft two. And that's okay. And I can also do multiple passes of these chapters. Like if I get further into the draft and decide, okay, I'm going to like go back over act one and clean it up. That's fine. Like I'm not going to be precious about the draft in the sense of, okay, chapter one is done. I'm never going to look at it. I also think I'm probably just rusty because if we're being honest, it's been months since I finished drafting the book and I haven't done any serious writing since then. So it might just take me some time to get back into it and to have things flow a little bit better. So I don't think I need to be so precious about these first few chapters in this pass. And don't get me wrong, chapter one, I think has improved. At the very least, it's improved in the sense that the details are accurate to the world building. There was stuff in chapter one that just truly did not make sense with all the world building work that 
I've done since I wrote the opening of this book. So at the very least, at least it's factually accurate now. It has the bones, I think, of what chapter one needs to have. It's been cleaned up a little bit. I do think it's overall stronger. So I feel like that's good enough for draft two at the moment. So I think we're gonna try to do chapter two today. And my goal loosely was to do about one act of the book per month. We'll see how realistic that is. I think if I am to do one chapter per day when I'm writing, because I don't write every day, but days that I do write, if I aim to do a chapter, I think that'll be a good pace at least to get started. And then maybe we can speed up later in the process once I am in flow state a little bit, because I am still hoping that I'll be able to crack how to get into flow state during revision, even if it's not happening. Literally no joke guys, while I was on the live stream last night, I probably rewrote the same couple sentences dozens of times, like, and I just couldn't get it. And I think that's okay. The thing is too, like, I'm gonna obviously have to do multiple drafts of this book. Like I am planning to do multiple drafts because it's gonna have to go to beta readers. It's gonna have to go to a copy editor, blah, blah, blah. I will be a better writer with each draft that I do of this book. Do you know what I mean? Like my writing craft is improving every time I revisit the project because of all the practice that I'm getting from working on it. So the eyes that I have in, let's say draft three or draft four are going to be better equipped to make the line level pros stronger than my current eyes. The same way that my current eyes are better equipped than draft one Brielle's eyes to make the pros stronger. Do you know what I'm saying? My point is that there might be certain things that I still don't quite know how to fix perfectly that maybe future me will. So agonizing over the fact that I don't know how to fix it perfectly right now is not going to help me, you know? I also do think I wanna prioritize reading more in my life. I do read quite a bit, at least compared to past me, but compared to a lot of like hardcore readers, I can't say that I read that much. And I wanna do some more analytical reading where I'm like focusing on how they're crafting sentences and paragraphs and chapters. So maybe I'll do some like annotating of books that I like as well, just to help kind of train my brain into what a good sentence it's a good paragraph, a good chapter looks like in my eyes. With all of that being said, little sick me is going to try and get chapter two done today. I have a live stream actually that I scheduled for 5 p.m. So that's actually already in five hours because it's almost noon when I'm filming this because I had a bit of a slow morning, which is fine because I'm sick. So we're giving ourselves patience here, but it's actually been a while since I've gone to a coffee shop and done a solo writing date. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Welcome into the vlog. Welcome into the thralls of revision hell. And if you are also a writer who has revised before, let me know down in the comments, did you have any similar struggles with the revision process? How did you balance kind of that flow state, that super creative mind with the more analytical mind of trying to actively make the manuscript better? Let me know because I'm struggling a little bit to find the right revision headspace. But again, I haven't done this before and we're just getting started. So yay, draft two, woo. <laughs> I am really excited to get back into a regular writing practice. And I think I just need to get used to it again. I think I need to like get back into the mindset. I would love to start writing like more. I don't love that I only really write on the weekends. I would love to start writing like every day. If you guys know Alyssa in the books, she writes pretty much every day. And I like admire that so much. I think it's so cool. I'm like, that would be fun. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Okay, hi. We're packing up for the coffee shop. The apartment is a disaster right now. I'm framing most of it out. Because I've been sick, I have not really done a great job of unpacking and organizing and stuff since I got back. So we have the annotated draft. We have my laptop. Oh, something fun. I got this calendar to track my sponsorships and my freelance clients for the rest of the year. So, that's fun. I told myself that I was gonna treat myself to this once I booked a certain number of clients. So I'm really excited. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna be tracking everything that has definitive dates, AKA sponsorships and freelance clients. And this is exciting because I haven't had for a long time things related to my own projects, my own channel that had specific deadlines or that involved other people who are collaborative in any way because for a long time I was just like posting videos whenever I wanted and it feels kind of nice now to have a little bit more of an obligation to other people or to like brands. It just makes me take myself a little bit more seriously with all of the writing and content creation stuff that I'm doing right now. So that's kind of fun. So this is a fun little treat. Ah! 
Can I do a decaf iced latte with oat milk? And that'll be it. Okay guys, it finally happened. We made it into flow state. I just got off the live stream. It was great. Thank you if you came. Um, the chat was incredible, very active and sweet. And if you guys want to catch the replay, it is on my channel now. Between the cafe earlier today and the live stream, I finished revising chapter two, which is amazing. If I can keep moving at this pace of completing a chapter each day that I write, I'm gonna be really, really pleased. I'm actually gonna get out my notebook because we can fill in two circles since we've done chapter one and chapter two. Guys, I'm literally giddy right now. So for context, the love interest comes to find her at her university and then they go to a broom closet and they hash it out and basically the plan for the journey is proposed so this is a journey book if you didn't know so this is where the journey gets like first proposed and she thinks he's crazy because it's his idea draft one as a whole was a lot choppier than this book hopefully will be in its final iteration so at the end of chapter two i had things cut off pretty much at the beginning of their conversation like we hear a little bit of them talking but then things cut off pretty quickly and then we resume chapter three substantially later in their conversation. So we're just missing on the page a lot of the dialogue that happens between these two characters. And I feel like the reader would just get frustrated by that. It's like, this is a big moment. It's the moment where the journey is proposed. And we don't even see that on the page when he actually suggests that they should do this. We jump right to the aftermath. Why? <laughs> I feel like I was scared to like have that whole conversation play out. But that's like what's interesting about this part of the book. Like why aren't we seeing all of that dialogue? We talked in previous vlogs how I just was not having enough dialogue in draft one period. So this was a great opportunity for me to really beef up chapter two. Chapter two was also very short as are a lot of the early chapters in this book. It was like a thousand something words and realistically knowing this is a new adult fantasy chapters should probably be a little bit longer two, 3k maybe even 4k words on the longer end so I was excited to have an opportunity to also beef up this chapter. It's now at 2,600 words because I basically finished out the scene in chapter two which means that chapter three is going to change substantially because chapter three started off with the ending of this scene and that will no longer be the case so chapter three is going to have to pretty much be gutted and restructured to accommodate this. Hopefully all of that made sense. I was trying to explain it as best as I could, but essentially I ended up adding 1300 new words to the document today. That is an estimation based on the fact that I was obviously swapping out sentences here and there, but a substantial amount of new words was added. And some of it guys, I'm obsessed with. Like some of it I love, like actually love. And this little dose of giddy excitement is gonna help me continue pushing through the process. Not something that I felt working on chapter one, but I also can't expect it to always feel like this. However, this like little moment, this little sparkly moment of like, oh my God, I love pieces of this is going to sustain me for a bit, I think. This is the most magical part of writing to me when you have those moments where it's like, oh my God, yes, like, yes. <laughs> and is all of the chapter like that? No. Is this chapter perfect now? Absolutely not. But there are new golden moments that I did not have in draft one. And that is a win to celebrate because the hope is that as I continue revising, more of those moments will pop up and maybe not the entire manuscript will feel like those golden moments, but that's okay. As long as there's enough of them where I'm starting to feel really proud of the story overall, you know? Anyway, my brain is feeling pretty much tapped out, but because I have all this motivation and excitement going on right now with how I'm feeling about the project, I want to continue working on something writing related. So I actually think I'm going to go ahead and work on a writing course. So I'm currently taking the How to Write a Novel course by Readsy Learning. And this course is really cool. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Thank you so much to Readsy Learning for sponsoring this video. If you're currently or planning to draft a novel, this is a 101 day intensive course taught by Tom Bromley, who is a author and best-selling ghostwriter. So basically this course is a three-month intensive that aims to improve your writing craft 
while you're drafting your novel. So the course includes daily actionable video lessons. So every single day you'll have a fresh video lesson to take. And of course, if you fall behind or anything, the library of previous video lessons is available to you as you continue through the rest of the course. They give you writing exercises and the course is really designed to very seamlessly take you through the process of drafting a novel. So the lessons really correspond with where in your book project you'll be at throughout the three month process. What I think is one of the coolest things about this course is that there are weekly live masterclasses featuring guest authors where you can basically have live interaction with the instructor. There's also live feedback sessions so you can get feedback on your work from the instructor and from other people in your cohort. If you are currently working on drafting a novel and you want some in-depth craft instruction as you're going through the process as well as just some encouragement and some expert input on your whip, I really recommend this course. You can get feedback on your novel idea as you're working through the drafting phase, get lots of great community support, and of course, learn a ton about writing craft along the way. So if you're interested in checking out this course, I will have a link in my description. So I'm going to go ahead and pick out a lesson that I want to listen to while I eat dinner today. <laughs> okay, so there's a section of the course called Secret Sauce that I'm feeling really driven to. I think the first lesson that I'm going to start with is on movement. I feel like this will be very helpful because I feel like choreographing scenes and figuring out how characters are moving around each other, their body language, is something that's so tricky. How much needs to be on the page? How do I make it seamless and not feel too mechanical or like play-by-play-esque? Thank you again to Reezy Learning for sponsoring this video. But today, the first of these key elements we're going to look at is movement. Life is movement, as Joe Moran says, and so if you're trying to capture life, human life, you're going to need to have movement. Is someone using my garden as I a am. backdrop? And it looks great. I've gotten many compliments on your Bulbasaur planner in the background. I love you. I love you too. Happy filming. Thanks. Hi, good morning, happy Sunday. So I started editing this video last night and I was thinking about how I feel like this vlog is such a good reflection of the emotional roller coaster that working on a book can be. <laughs> because literally we started off the vlog with me being like, revision is so impossible. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I was like questioning the quality of my writing and the book and all of these things. And then when I worked on chapter two, I was like, wow, like I struck gold. Like this is incredible. So so let this be a reminder to you that it is normal to experience these fluxes of emotion throughout your writing and I think this is just kind of what revision is probably gonna look like for me is oscillating back and forth between panic that my book sucks and excitement and confidence and those moments of magic. So as I said, when I like sort of recapped my drafting process, I knew that at some point I was gonna struggle with the self-doubt, with questioning the quality of the book. And I just think that's what's happening for me a bit during revising. I was very lucky to not experience that during drafting, but during revising, it's coming up a little bit, but that's okay because then we're having these high moments where I'm feeling really confident in the project. So it's all part of the process and I'm trying not to like take it too seriously or get too stressed about it. Cause at the end of the day this is fun i'm enjoying myself and as people reminded me in my live stream last night the book is never going to be perfect i just gotta release that idea right now <laughs> because i can obviously only make it as good as i am capable of making it and that's that's that you know so i asked you guys for some questions actually in my community tab and i said that i would answer them throughout the revision vlogs so we're gonna answer a few of those now i got a lot more questions than i was expecting so i'm thinking i'm just gonna space these out throughout future vlogs answer a couple questions per video if you have any additional questions that you want to leave for future videos leave them down in the comments and i'll get to them slowly but surely first one is what does your perfect writing editing day look like if you had to pick a completely different genre to write your next whip what would you pick perfect editing or writing day honestly probably looks like waking up early which is still difficult <laughs> but like if i'm really talking about an idealized version of my perfect writing day waking up early going to a coffee shop first thing getting a cute little breakfast and coffee editing for a few hours writing for a few hours coming home maybe doing some like answering some emails doing some more like youtube stuff having lunch and then going maybe to like the park in the afternoon doing a park writing session and then maybe after dinner ordering boba and doing a nighttime writing session with a friend that to me 
dream life dream life <laughs> if i was a full-time writer that is how i would structure my days absolutely and then in terms of if i had to write my next whip in a totally different genre like totally different i'm gonna take as like not even fantasy whatsoever i think i would either do strictly dystopian because i really have enjoyed the dystopian parts of this project and i loved dystopian stuff growing up i wish there was more of it nowadays and also i've written dystopian projects in the past i think that genre actually fits pretty well with my writing so either something strictly dystopian with no magical elements no fantasy or a contemporary romance fantasy and contemporary romance i would say i read a pretty even amount of once i started discovering the types of contemporary romance i liked the genre really grew on me when i first got back into reading i was reading some contemporary romance that was just like not my vibe but we learned pretty quickly and so now i really like contemporary romance so i could see myself writing that and i would not be surprised if i write a contemporary romance in the future although i think my heart still lies in books that have at least some sort of fantasy or dystopian or something a little different from our world going on there was a vlog not too long ago when you displayed a program you used for mapping out the journey taken and unraveling can you tell us how you approach geography landscapes distances and how much of the world is urbanized at a given time well the first thing i'll say is that this has been one of the hardest things for me because geography and anyone who knows me in my personal life will tell you geography sense of distance sense of time all of that does not come to me naturally i have terrible sense of direction understanding landscapes and stuff is is just not uh, something that came to me naturally so it was something that i was nervous about with this project in terms of what you saw for me calculating distances i was really just using google maps to calculate walking and train distances between different cities in america that i was then basically overlaying those distances and those cities with my world map which i created in incarnate so basically i was using a combination between google maps and incarnate where i had created my fantasy map to basically do like a bit of a transitive property situation and like you American cities to gauge distances between my fantasy cities which worked great I strongly recommend this because it really helped me get a sense of how big my continent had to be how long it would realistically take them to get from point A to point B based on how far apart I was imagining the cities it was very very good and really made the process less overwhelming as someone who could not really conceptualize or naturally visualize how long these things would take I really needed to take a look at it <laughs> in like a more physical form also my camera battery's flashing so that's concerning so i really liked that method as far as like geography and landscaping goes i've honestly been consulting a lot of my friends to kind of serve as sounding boards for what sounds realistic geographically that has been a huge resource for me because i just know that compared to other people i don't have a great sense of those things and i guess that kind of is a tip leverage the resources in your real life you know like i've asked friends about camping and like the logistics of how to start a fire i've asked friends is it realistic for there to be a rainforest next to this type of landscape and they were like no brielle it's absolutely not you should probably not make it a rainforest <laughs> But that was really helpful to me. And of course, you could try to like Google search some of these things if you don't have friends around you to ask these questions. But take advantage of the fact that people in your life likely have different expertise and try to use their experiences, their knowledge to help you kind of vet what is and isn't realistic for your world. Because at the end of the day, they probably also have a good idea of what a reader would and would not believe because they are a potential reader yeah there is some landscape stuff that i definitely am gonna have to adjust in draft two because i realized when i was doing all of my work after draft one that there were some unrealistic landscapes going on in the first draft which it, it'd be like that sometimes and that's okay do you have those impulses to want to start the whole novel from scratch last year it was difficult for me to advance in the process because i wanted to rewrite everything and another question do you have any system for this draft okay thank god i have not had that impulse i did have like a fleeting moment when i was working on chapter one of like wow Wow, this whole revising mindset is kind of hard like would it be easier if i tried to rewrite this chapter from scratch but then i was like no it simply would not because i already wrestled with what's in this chapter so much why would i scrap that if i don't have to and i think it totally depends right because sometimes maybe if you do a zero draft and it's super messy and there's so much you want to change about what happens in the book sometimes maybe you do need a rewrite but i would say if you like pieces if there are bits and chunks of chapters that you enjoy that you think are well written if there's scenes that you think are pretty good as they are there's no need to rewrite the whole book don't make it harder for yourself i feel like sometimes rewriting can maybe be a self-sabotage and a perfectionism 
one thing of like you won't let yourself get further in the process because you're just like insecure about how it's coming out and all of that and I would say just like try to be real with yourself do you want to rewrite because you genuinely think the book will be better for it and you're not happy with anything you have so far or do you want to rewrite because you're insecure about how the draft is now and you're worried you're not going to be able to revise effectively I would say trust the revision process trust yourself to be able to work with what you have and make it better and know that you might not need to rewrite that being said every chapter is going to be different there are chapters that I know will basically need a heavy-handed edit closer to a rewrite there's new material that I have to write from scratch but then there are chapters that I'm pretty happy with and yes they need a polish but they're decent as they are so I think it varies from chapter to chapter so just because maybe there's some portions of the book that you're not confident with doesn't mean you need to rewrite the whole thing there might be pieces that are really good as well and I think it comes back to our earlier conversations about perfectionism and knowing that your book might never be perfect it certainly doesn't have to be perfect on draft two but you got to keep pushing through the steps of the process anyway otherwise it'll never be better better is better than perfect good is better than perfect whatever that phrase is <laughs> the second question was do i have a system for this draft yes i feel like i talked about that a lot in my pre-revision sort of vlogs but basically what i did i annotated the entire draft i made notes of all the changes i wanted to make both in the annotations and in the margins of like my scrivener document so i had all of those notes already set for things i wanted to change and now i'm taking a pretty chronological approach at least so far i'm going chapter by chapter aiming to do one act per month and basically consulting my notes everything i want to change within that chapter and just taking it chronologically filling in a little circle every time I accomplish a chapter I think for me working chronologically works better in general just because I like having the context of where I'm at in the story and knowing where the relationships and stuff are I feel like if I jumped ahead I could risk just not having that natural relationship and arc progression as much so I'm still taking things chronologically and just trying to do one chapter at a time so I don't get overwhelmed I know some people do a revision checklist of all the changes they want to make for me there's way too many small changes for that to make sense for my process so I'm looking at it more on a chapter by chapter level and i think we're gonna wrap up this vlog here i'm gonna probably start filming another vlog soon but it's been a while since i got a video out to you guys so i want to get this all edited and uploaded but we'll be continuing with the revision vlogs and i'll keep taking you guys along for the rest of the revising process if you made it all the way to the end of this video comment down below a flower emoji and if you want to check out reedsy's how to write a novel course i will have that link down in the description thank you guys so much for being here for all your support and i will see you soon with another video bye